For the longest time, I secretly wanted more. I often found myself shrinking to fit in, settling for what was comfortable, and even selling myself short. Once I finally accepted that we deserve success and we are blessed with the power to achieve it, I stopped playing small. I'm serious about building a life I love and you should be too. I'm Denise Taylor of DeniseTaylor.live and welcome to Life, Love, and the Pursuit of Happiness. I help women prioritize themselves, their success, and their happiness. Let's meet this week's achiever whose story will inspire you to push past your fears and soar. Well, hello and welcome back. I'm Denise Taylor, your host of Life, Love, and the Pursuit of Happiness, and I am always excited to have you check in with us. You see, this weekly podcast is here to be an encouragement and inspiration to you. I believe that you can build a life that you love without apology. I believe that God has given you the power to do it. He said, don't walk in fear, but take on that power. Embrace your power so that you can go be, do, have, and achieve all your heart's desires. I also believe that there are five success superpowers that when we put them to work, we can change and impact our lives. We can realize all the dreams that our heart holds. The superpowers are these. One, see yourself successful. We have to see it and pursue it. Number two, shake off fear. We got to cast fear to the side. It's nothing more than false evidence appearing real. Number three is do the work. I wish we could stop sidestep doing the work, but the reality is we have got to put our hand to the plow, but we have it with a promise. God will bless the work of our hands. Number four is take care of you. Many times we don't do all that we need to, to take care of ourselves in every aspect of who we are, our mind, our will, our body, our finances, everything that makes up who we are deserves a plan to be cared for. And finally, we have to hold fast to our faith. Now, this week's Achiever, I am so excited because my conversation with Ebony, she kept it real. In the journey of love, many people find love again. And as a result of finding love again, sometimes you've got to figure out how to blend your families together. And what I love is that when Ebony and her husband found that they needed support and was not able to locate it, she created it. And so here we're going to have a conversation about blended families. And I think you We'll see how they saw themselves successful, superpower number one, and not only that, they began to serve. So take a listen, take a listen to my conversation with Ebony, and I believe you'll be blessed. And of course, I'll see you on the other side. Well, I am excited to be here with Ebony. Um, She has joined me today. And let me give you a little bit of a background as to why I um, believe Ebony is going to help us understand perspectives. You see, the blended family structure is becoming increasingly common these days. According to census data, 1,300 new step families form every day in the United States. And unlike traditional family arrangements of our parents and our grandparents, many relationships today are formed from broken and sometimes traumatic relationships. I got that detail from checking out Ebony's background. She and her husband together have risen up to start a support, um, I'll say resource for blended families. And what she's discovered in this process of her own experience, as well as serving others, that often children are involved in these circumstances and we have to prioritize them as well as ourselves in the relationship. Usually step families, if you will, or blended families come Mm -hmm. as the result of some kind of breakup, some kind of broken hearts, maybe even tragedy or trauma. And all of that has to be confronted when that new family forms. And through Ebony's pain, 
she has found purpose and she has confronted those things and she has now began to work with her husband to create resources. And for that, I am excited. I'm excited to have this conversation. <laughs> now, Ebony, one of the things that you don't know is um, I've sponsored different events about relationships. And one of the things that I have gotten as feedback is the necessity to look at this non-traditional, if I could call it that, mm -hmm. model of family, the blended family. Now it's a little bit different from my experience. And so when I ran across you, I was like, oh my God, I need to have a conversation. <laughs> There's someone serving in this space, someone who recognizes the need. And I know your voice is very needed. So it's, it's absolutely my pleasure to lift your voice today. So welcome, Ebony. Welcome to Life, Thank Love, you. and the Pursuit of Happiness. I talked a little bit about where you serve, but why don't you introduce yourself to us? Um, so my name is Ebony Whitson, and my, I'm the co-founder of Blended Love. My husband is the other founder, of course. Um, we have been together, it'll be nine years in June. We've been married. We have six children. Um, my husband had two, and then I had three coming into the marriage, and then we were crazy enough to have one more mm -hmm. um, together. And through that journey with having our child that we had together and then raising our children, you know, from our previous relationships together, we kind of saw that something was different. Something wasn't right. Mm -hmm. And so it was our conversation that we had with our daughter because she's very observant. And she said, you know, my siblings have different last names. Mm -hmm. They're still my siblings, right? My, some of my siblings have different parents, you know, There's, you know, are those parents, my parents, you know, she had so many questions and we were like, how do we address this? You know, what is, what is this? And what's really, what do we have here? And that's when we, we noticed was like, we have a blended family mm -hmm. and we really need to look at this as something that needs to be brought out more because it's not spoken about. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's not new, but it's just not talked about. And the struggles that we had, if there were resources available, we feel that we wouldn't have had those troubles, you know? Mm -hmm. um, we wouldn't have had so many hurdles to get over when it comes to communication, when it comes to raising your children together, all of those questions and things that you need to be prepared for, we weren't. Mm -hmm. And so we said, we're gonna do something about this. Mm -hmm. And that's when we formed our ministry. So it's a community organization, it's a nonprofit, but more than ever, it's a ministry because we believe that our faith is what really brought our family through this time period um, up to nine years, you know, mm -hmm. and um, it's what's carrying us on because there's so many different things that we still continue to deal with to this day. And um, so we try to really put the information out there on how to bond your families, you know, how to date, um, you know, talk with different families that have been in the blended family structure, whether you're, you know, getting married with older children, you know, or getting married and one parent doesn't have any children and the other parent does. There's so many different types of situations and if there's a broad perspective, mm -hmm. um, we can't cover them all, but we try to cover the most common ones to help people have an example, you know, mm -hmm. of what to prepare for. And so it's really been a blessing just to see how many families are ready. We have touched, we've only been in existence for a little over a year mm -hmm. and it is just, it's, spread so fast, you know? Um, but I believe that that's how you know that you're doing exactly what God told you to do when it takes off that's and awesome. um, with the right people, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, because as I mentioned to you, it absolutely is an area of interest and in something that I get asked about on a regular basis. And mm -hmm. so knowing that you're creating a resource structure that's mm -hmm. going to be meaningful and impactful to families in this way is great. Now, you you talked about this a little bit, but I wanna be real deliberate okay. in defining what is considered a blended family. And I, I imagine that this takes on many hues and many mm -hmm. different forms, but from the perspective of especially how you and your husband are serving, define that for us. So a blended family can come from divorce, can come from death of a spouse, or it can come from a broken relationship with me and my husband. I had a child from a previous divorce. I had children from a broken relationship. 
My husband had children from broken relationships. And so you're bringing those things and think about it. That's two different variables. Mm -hmm. Having a child from a divorce and a broken relationship. And then also going with a partner Mm -hmm. who has children from broken relationships. You know, Mm -hmm. we've got variable on top of variable on top of variable against us already Mm -hmm. and had no knowledge, you know, Mm -hmm. of how to even prepare for that. Mm -hmm. Um, So to give you an example, you can say, um, you know, I had a previous relationship, didn't work out. We had a child together. You know, we're still trying to co-parent. And now I am together with someone else. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, we st- we still now have these outside parents or outside, you know, um, factors that we have to deal with within our relationship as well. And so that's kind of what makes a blended family structure. Yeah. Um, if you don't have, I know there's been some requests of like, you know, blended families as if the grandparents are raising the children, mm-hmm. if the aunts and uncles are raising the children, you know, taking them in after certain situations. Mm-hmm. Um, that is also an example of a blended family, but it's not as um, traumatic as when they come, is when two families are merging together. Mm-hmm. There's also um, families of different backgrounds. So you say, you know, we, we worship different faiths or we have different heritages. That too can be a blended family. But again, um, we've, we found that there's more trauma, more difficulties when there's the families coming together with those children from those different relationships. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you for that. Mm-hmm. Now your husband's name is Alan, right? Mm-hmm. All right. Well, make sure I got the right guy there. Okay. <laughs> now together, as you mentioned, you and Alan have six children. Mm-hmm. It's a bit of mine, yours, ours, as you right. described. Was this ever an upfront consideration or concern as your love relationship was developing? And did you have any upfront conversations about becoming a blended family in that courting stage? When we dated, it was, um, we had an uh, untraditional style of dating because, um, and I'll kind of give you a short backstory. Me and my husband met because our two oldest daughters went to school together and so that's how we ran into each other so um our children were already kind of familiar with each other because our three girls were already going to school together so they were already playing on the playground and you know talking and you know hanging out with each other and so we never kind of looked at it as yours or ours or yours or mine it was like well our girls you know they're already our girls how nice um and so, um, and then he had a son, but they, he didn't go to the same school because he lives out of state. And then I had a son. So um, we were all kind of, you know, hanging out together. Like we, were, we rarely had a date where it was kind of just me and him mm-hmm. um, just because of their familiar, familiarity already with each other. Now, I wouldn't tell anyone to do that right away off, off top. Let, you know, you guys get to know each other before you bring in the children. But because our children were already aware of each other, mm-hmm. that's why we did it that way. We we're like, well, let's just keep everybody together. You know, some of our dates were at Ducky G's. I, it, that's just how it went. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we never really had those discussions. But when we had those tough moments about discipline or, you know, what do we do? Or um, it, it never really came up when it needed to. Mm-hmm. And we didn't know to be prompted to ask those questions. Okay, how do how are we going to raise our children together from this point on? Because it's one thing when you're dating and after everything is over, you go to your household, he goes to his. Mm-hmm. Well, that's fine. But what about when it's gonna be all around each other all the time? Then what are we gonna do? You know, then that's when the, the real feelings come out. It's not playtime, it's not a play date for the kids. They're like, oh, you guys are here all the time, mm-hmm. you know? we didn't talk about that, you know, and they were excited when we got engaged. But then when we actually, cause we had them at the wedding, we actually walked down the aisle. It was a whole different story. My oldest daughter cried the entire ceremony and reception. She just didn't see, she was like, it's hitting me now. You're going to, you're going to always be here. Wait a minute. I didn't know you were all, you were going to stay. Mm-hmm. So those are some conversations that I really believe that we could have had with our children mm-hmm. in more in depth. And really included that um, in some of our counseling, too, because we did premarital counseling, but we really didn't talk a lot about what are we going to do family-wise, you know? 
it was more so how do you make your marriage last, which was very great for us because we, we needed those tips even with our marriage, but we should have incorporated some of that. Bring the kids in. How do they feel? Mm-hmm. You all need to have a counseling session because this is going to be a pretty interesting relationship. So those are some of the things that we try to help people with now mm-hmm. so that um, not saying you're going to avoid every issue, but that you'll know how to approach them. That's awesome. Actually, that's actually a really, really good recommendation um, to to have those type of conversations and those type of resources. It makes me think mm-hmm. of um, when my husband and I went through um, preparing for like our estate planning, right? Mm-hmm. And when we did that, the attorney had a pre- Uh, defined list of questions that we had to answer. Mm -hmm. And I would imagine, and and they were very thought provoking questions, like all these different scenario based questions that we kind of had to talk about um, what we wanted to have occur in that situation. It, it, It seems like to your point, there's efforts and energies around um, premarital counseling that is focused on the relationship between you and your husband. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I I think you're right that it has not evolved to consider the family structure Mm -hmm. and how to help the families understand what shifts and dynamics are going to occur when this union takes place. So that seems like a tremendous need. How have Mm -hmm. you guys begin serving in that way or helping in that way? So what we do right now, um, we just started getting back to our live events and um, some of our more in-person things that are coming up this year, but we have started doing what's called candy convos every fourth Sunday of the month. And we would bring in um, someone who has been a part of a blended family and just talk about their experience and some of the things that they've learned to kind of help people, you know, um, help them along. So we've asked them questions, some of the things they learned, like, you know, before they got married, what are the that some of the things that they're doing differently now, how are they handling conflict, you know, and it just gives a different perspective. And that has been very helpful. And so from that, now we're working with a licensed therapist to create a platform where we can introduce um, blended family concepts into therapy, something that we can deliver to, um, you know, most therapies, most premarital counseling is done through church. So we can deliver it to churches, we can deliver it to counseling agencies, but just something, a curriculum that outlines the specific points that must be covered before they get married Mm -hmm. so that they know. And it's not just a workbook for the couple, it's a workbook for the children as well, Mm -hmm. because we want them to voice their express their opinions. And, you know, I feel like they do have a say so because they do you, it's not, it's not like they don't matter. Mm -hmm. Um, If they're five and younger, that's, that's a little bit different. They're more impressionable. So it's not as, as difficult to bring them in, but if they're older than that, you need to have a talk with them. You need to make sure that they're on the same page. Girl, um, it's grown folks who got issues with their parents' uh, oh. relationships. So yes. I can only yes. imagine, you know, that dynamic because there are people who struggle with it, you know, mm-hmm. even as adults. Uh, yeah, you get you get those adults who say, this is my mama. I've been taking care of her. Who are you? Let your mama go. <laughs> be happy you know like you're gonna need some help with that so that's just your mom that's not your girlfriend so we we do see that a lot you know or you know or the, or the daughter and her dad I don't I don't like your wife that's not your that's not your your place mm-hmm. if that's that's his wife you know mm-hmm. you go on you live your life your family but you get that you get that pushback all the time yeah and and I, I fi- it feels like these type of conversations would be so valuable up mm-hmm. front Um, Mm -hmm. And and they may even shed light on um, different ways or different thinking that people have that you just assume they're going to be on the same page with you. Because I, you know, 
just seeing every which way this could go, it could certainly go that mama is on the same page with the son, right? Like yeah. that's my my mama, that's my son, you know. <laughs> And you seeing something like that early on and having conversations around that seems like it would be so incredibly valuable. So that resource mm -hmm. that you're putting together is so needed. And I hope that the different ministries or therapists or counselors who are helping in that sector really give thought to this category of family mm -hmm. discussion that needs to happen as families are coming together. Now, mm -hmm. one of the things you talked about was the experience with your youngest daughter. Mm -hmm. And you talked about her asking about the different last names and being very inquisitive about that and that mm -hmm. really shining light that there was a dynamic at place that you know, needed to be understood from everyone's perspective. Mm -hmm. He has relationships that didn't work out. So there are other women involved. You have right. relationships that didn't work out. So there's other men involved, but yet the two of you have now a daughter that is a part of the family as well. So mm -hmm. when she started to shed light on this and ask the question in a very innocent way, like, why is my last name different? Why are they last right. names different? You know, <laughs> Um, what did that experience kind of do for you? She is such, she, her view on our family is she's all inclusive. Everybody's all inclusive. So our children may have other siblings. Well, to her, that's their siblings. That's her siblings too. If they have another sister or brother, those are her sister and brothers too. We haven't made our you know changed our mind or anything like that if that's how she sees it that's fine with us and she looks at the parents and she's like oh that's okay they're a part of the family too mm -hmm. she's like you're gonna go with your dad this weekend have a great time you know like she's just it doesn't phase her but mind you she was born into this structure so to her she doesn't see it as a difference she sees it that this is normal to me mm -hmm. you know and so we've been just as open to that because of her you know, we see it that way that, um, and it may not always work out like that. It, everybody might not always want to be together or cooperating. That does happen. But for the most part, we're right with her and we encourage her that, yes, we are one big family. We are a very big family. And so her mindset is the mindset we wish that everybody would have kind of going into this, you know, we are just expanding our family. Mm -hmm. There's just more people to love our children. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, I, I think that that is uh, such great innocence on her part. And I think one of the key things that you said was she doesn't know any different. This mm -hmm. is the structure she was born into. And so she is able to embrace it. The other thing you said that I want to hone in on is if everyone cooperates mm -hmm. um, because mm -hmm. that is a very <laughs> huge factor mm -hmm. um, especially if I recall correctly in your case because there's two dads involved and in your husband's case is it one or two moms involved so um with mine it's actually three it's just one of my daughters her father is um not present okay so and then um yes with my husband there's two Right. So you, you know, you have a lot of people that's coming to the table mm -hmm. that have influence. Mm -hmm. And so when you take into consideration that cooperation factor, tell me how you begin to light a fire to the effect of, can we all get along? How do you spur that along? <laughs> so when I came into the picture, um, now with me, when you're a single mom, you have more of control, okay? You have more of a say-so just because you have the parent. You have kids all the time. The dad doesn't. But when I met my husband, that was not the case. He had his children all the time, which was very rare. Um, and so, you know, then he would kind of work out different arrangements, you know, with their mothers as far as when, you know, when they would get them. And they had a different system than I had. I didn't have anybody to answer to, really. And um, I was kind of doing my, you know, raising my kids and it was my household, but he had a different system. And when I came in, I interrupted their system. Mm -hmm. So it did cause a rift. Mm -hmm. And um, so 
some of that is not situated today. I should say with one of their moms, but the you know, but the other one we've made peace, and that doesn't always happen. You know, people are kind of like, you know, this is, um, this is the way we were doing things before you came. Who are you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and how how can you come and say now that he can't do this? And they don't understand the difference between a wife and a girlfriend. Mm-hmm. I'm not his girlfriend. I'm his wife. Mm-hmm. I have different privileges. And I come before all of this. So you have to understand that what I say does go, you know, and if they were married, then they would see the same thing. Well, in an honorable marriage, I should say, and they would see the same thing. Well, I can't be all concerned about his household either. I've got a husband. Mm -hmm. It's strictly about the child, you know, and we're going to go from there. Mm -hmm. That makes it a lot more, um, to say not not comfortable but a lot more feasible if everybody does have that but when they don't then you have people who continuously focus on your relationship and your household and they always have something to say you know then you have to deal with that all the time mm-hmm. and keep reminding people that if it's not about the children we don't have anything to say mm-hmm. so um that's a constant conversation mm-hmm. and that we have to have as well yeah and and i imagine the place where it gets the most pressure with this dynamic, this particular Mm -hmm. one we're talking about now with the external um, adult, you know, parents that are involved, the place that gets the most pressure is between you and him. Mm -hmm. Because, and just as much as, you know, a traditional parenting setting is, you know, you and the the husband got to be on the same page, right? you know, but just as much in this, you and your husband has to be, have to be on the same page Mm -hmm. as you're dealing with all these external factors that have a front row seat, right? What is going on and even have, um, influencing bias with Mm -hmm. the little person that they got involved in the mix as Mm -hmm. well. And so how do you navigate that perspective Mm -hmm. of making sure you and your husband are on the same page and that you're answering uh, the situation the same way and deal with any conflict there? So, for a while, my husband was not comfortable discussing the conversations he had with his children's mothers with me. Mm-hmm. And that, um, you know, you already feel it. Like that just made me feel, mm-hmm. you know, really, really hurtful. And, um, but he was more concerned of making sure that he didn't upset them so that he could still you know, get his children and do what he needed to do. Mm -hmm. And so I I had to look at it from his point, you know, his, they were hanging his kids over his head, you know, Mm -hmm. what what do you, what do you do? You know, as a man, you you want to be a father. And I saw that, you know, above anything else that I, that attracted me to him was the fact that he was an amazing and still is an amazing father. Mm -hmm. And so that was in jeopardy because they would get upset, you know, Mm -hmm. and we had to be able to get comfortable enough and say, we need to have a talk. You know, they don't need to call you all the time. They don't need, you know, this and that. The kids are old enough that the kids call you if they have a question, if they need something. They don't have to address you on every aspect. And it it was hard for him to adjust to that and trust that he could make those changes and still have the same privileges that he does with his children. So he was very, very nervous. We had to be very prayerful and say, what's going to be best for our marriage? You know, um, if you continue to have these conversations like this or, you know, or, or we can kind of cut that off and, and do what we need to do as a couple. And even on my end, um, to make him more comfortable, I introduced him to my children's fathers. Mm-hmm. And I said, okay, from now on, you know, it got to a point where communication went through him. Mm-hmm. So I don't, at this point, I don't talk to my kids' fathers and I don't think that I need to. Mm-hmm. If you have something or need communication, you can go through the head of my household. Mm-hmm. I, I'm so okay with that. And there is no side conversation. If they actually do need to bring me into the conversation, then I can. But there is no side conversation. And that eliminates the, you remember when? Mm-hmm. Or do you miss me? No. Mm-hmm. 
you ain't got nothing to say because you are going through the head of my household. And, um, and so that cleared out a lot of drama for me. I was so thankful for that. Mm-hmm. And some people say, you, you just, you just gave, you just let him just call it. I said, yeah, because I'm not attached to that. We have a child together, but I'm not, I'm not still attached to that. When you have to have that direct contact and have to be involved with them, you have to look at, are you over that person? Mm. And I have no feelings, no strings attached, no nothing, you know, and I'm thankful for that. So I was able to hand that right over to my husband mm-hmm. and say, you take you, this is yours now, you know, and that was new for him to say, really, I have to you know, talk to these men, mm-hmm. but it was beneficial because man to man was received better than man to woman or man to woman that I used to be with. You know, mm-hmm. it was man to man. Mm-hmm. And what time are you coming to pick them up? Mm-hmm. That was it. You know, because <laughs> see what I hear you talking about are boundaries and standards. Mm-hmm. Um, I, what I hear you talking about is rules of engagement. Mm-hmm. What I hear you talking about is an approach or a strategy of how we are going to thrive in this new normal that we have. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't discredit their relationship with their children. It doesn't discredit or add any added pressure to the relationship you have with your husband Mm -hmm. because he's a participant in this process. Yes. He is at the table. He has a voice. In fact, he's a conduit of the discussions that are taking place, which Mm -hmm. removes all doubt, right? Yes. To your point, you can't slide nothing into me because (laughs) I'm not even open that way. And so I think that's an excellent strategy. Mm -hmm. I think it absolutely is an excellent strategy on your behalf but where it sounds like you know not to pick at it but where it mm-hmm. sounds like you still have to be more trusting is when he has conversations with his um children's mother and mm-hmm. so you kind of get both ends of it in terms of the boundaries that are in place in mm-hmm. that you have a boundary that's been set that says I don't engage, but you have to deal with a boundary that has been set that is not as rigid as the one on Mm -hmm. your side. So tell me how you deal with that. So now, um, I guess once I turn things over to him, um, from my end, it opened him up to say, you know, you know, I didn't, I didn't think you were going to do that. And it made him comfortable Mm -hmm. to say, you know, I got a call today. Mm -hmm. This is what we talked about. You know, and I don't have to check his phone records. I don't have to do any of that kind of stuff. I do trust him mm-hmm. because before he wasn't telling me anything, mm-hmm. nothing. It would just be, they decided that's what's going to happen. And I never knew what was discussed until it was carried out. Mm-hmm. Now I'm a part of those discussions and he'll even tell them, I need to go talk to my wife first mm-hmm. and then I'll let you know what we're going to do. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I was not that person. I was like, I am the wife. Yes. <laughs> you know, that's when I, you know, I, I had to come into, I came into that role and it was like, and when he says it, then it, they have to respect that. Mm-hmm. They, you can't say, well, no, you know, we're going to do this together because she's also involved in the kids' lives. Yeah. And so we do, we talk about the things that go on. We make those decisions together and he'll go back and let them know what the decision is. And I'm okay with that. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think it's a little different with men than it is with women. Um, when it comes to having that communication, you know, between, you know, that that's your child's father, but that's now, you know, my spouse, um, we're emotional creatures, Mm -hmm. uh, (laughs) you know, just, just by nature. And so sometimes it's a little hard for us to put the emotions aside and say, I'm just, I'm just going to handle this Mm -hmm. and be done. Mm -hmm. So because that is not always the case, I don't necessarily need to have communication with them. Yeah. Yeah. I could definitely see that because what has to happen, um, on this side of it, dealing with other women is there Mm -hmm. has to be a degree of maturity. Mm -hmm. There has to be a degree of understanding the roles, um, and not feeling threatened and just Mm -hmm. really, um, a stronger sense of wanting to thrive in the relationship that 
may not, and when I say thrive in the relationship, I mean in the interest of children, not necessarily that you and that person is going to become best buddies. That's not really where I'm, I'm thinking right. it would go. Um, but when it is man to man, there is a different dynamic there. I will mm-hmm. say that versus woman mm-hmm. to woman, because woman to woman definitely requires something a little bit more on the part of both of you. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think some women can get to it, but some definitely can't. So thank you. Thank you for sharing so transparently with your experience. Now, tell me about some of the struggles that you face being the step parent. So my husband works a lot. Mm -hmm. He he loves his job, but he does work a lot. Mm -hmm. And so I would have the children Mm -hmm. and um, all of the kids. So is in mine. And there were the arguments and fights that our kids used to have with each other, you know, one minute they're brother and sister, the next minute they're not, and um, not wanting to listen to me. So there, were, I would always have to call him at work and say, can you please talk to your son? <laughs> you, know, I, you know, there was certain things that I just could not handle. And it was, I felt like sometimes they waited till he walked out the door and everything just went haywire and I'm like oh my gosh and I tried I tried to do fun field trips activities you know um let's do this which I want to eat you know just so they would enjoy their time with me and a friend of mine said you can't always make it like that Mm -hmm. you've gotta let home be home Mm -hmm. so that they don't think that every time dad walks out the door you getting ready to run them to great America or something that's not, that's not what you're here for. You're a parent just like he's a parent. And so you have to lay those ground rules. Today, we're going to be at the house. Mm-hmm. Find something to entertain yourself with. Mm-hmm. Please behave. You know, that's the same thing that dad would do unless it was a scheduled activity. So I calmed all that down. Um, and I was like, okay, we're going to hang out. You guys want to go outside? You can go outside. You know, but that's all we're doing today. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that it began to kind of get some normality in the household and just get us into a system. But there was there were a lot of um, behavior issues in the beginning and um, just adjusting to well, I'll have to listen to you. You know, you're not you're not my mom. I don't have to, you know, and um, it, that hurt, you know, that hurt me. That hurt my kids, you know, and they were like, no, she's you know, she's not your mom, but you know, she's our mom and you can't talk to her that way. And oh, now we have like, I don't need y'all to come to my rescue. I'm okay. Mm -hmm. But you know, you get that, you know, they're territorial still. That's my mom. You're not going to talk to my mom that way. Mm -hmm. And so he had to come in and say, I want you guys to at least respect her, Mm -hmm. you know, respect her as my wife, respect her as somebody that loves you. And when I walk out this door, I want to know that's what that's what your guys are doing is respecting her police. And so it did. It didn't really talk too much to me, mm-hmm. which was fine. But, at, you know, but they it took a while, I should say, to build the relationship. But they did as he said. And when he stepped in and said, I expect this of you, that's when things turned around. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he, he just I can't have you guys disrespecting her. I can't have you guys, you know, cutting up as soon as I leave for work. That's not going to happen anymore. Mm-hmm. So. Once we got to the respect aspect of it, then we were able to kind of build a relationship. That's good. And so, you know, and work on that. Yeah. And and that takes time. Yeah. That's Mm -hmm. really good. And that, that takes time and consistency. Mm -hmm. Um, And Mm -hmm. it also takes your husband doing what he did was Mm -hmm. to show up, to bring the authoritative voice and to set the expectation. Mm -hmm. And, after that, it became a manner of holding everyone accountable mm-hmm. to the expectation, be it you, be it them, be it the others. Everybody right. had to be held accountable to that. And I really, on the outside looking in, again, because this isn't necessarily my direct experience, I feel like that's where things fall apart. Mm -hmm. It's when we start shirking the accountability to the expectation of um, treating one another well, to the expectation of respect, to the expectation Mm -hmm. of how we are going to function as a family unit. And when we see it erode is when it pops up 
into all these other dynamics that put enormous pressure on the marriage relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I think um, it, it's extremely honorable what your husband did. How do you encourage families to get there to that point? Now, here's the thing, because it, it, him putting his foot down and actually setting that tone is one thing for our household. But mind you, they go back to another household mm -hmm. and they go back to, you ain't got to listen to her. Mm -hmm. What did I say? Mm -hmm. I'm your mother. So now they come back and we got to start all over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's a continual process mm -hmm. until everyone does come on board. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, as long as they have this in their ear, mm -hmm. you know, as soon as they walk out the door, yeah. it, it all goes away. Yeah. And so you have a continuous battle that you're fighting against you know, over and over again, you know, please, we're not telling you not to listen to your mother, but we're also telling you that what she's saying is incorrect. Mm -hmm. yeah. How is the child going to feel? Mm -hmm. Now they're in the middle, you know, do, am I loyal to dad? Am I loyal to mom? Mm -hmm. She says she don't like that lady. So, you know, what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. That's, you know, you'll get that. You'll definitely get that. And you're trying to build a household and you have someone consistently trying to tear that down. Yeah, that's that's powerful. Um, and that's real, right? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. it's almost like you spend two weeks trying to get it to one place and it just gets completely demolished over yep. a weekend. Yep. You know, and I think that's when you can be like, I, I know y'all over there talking about me because my you know oh, yeah. it came back and started just back where we had made so much progress from before. Mm -hmm. And I think what it has to um again put so much pressure on is your resolve to remain committed to it mm -hmm. you and your husband's resolve to remain focused on the relationship in the right mm -hmm. way um but i would imagine it's just something you have to stick with and yeah what i find what i find immaturity pounces on um children pounce on is where they see fracture yeah where they see a little bit of fracture where they see a little bit of a rift that's kind of where they angle in to see mm -hmm. whether or not they can bust it open a little bit right oh yeah and oh, so yeah. the tighter you guys can stay together and be on the same page you mm -hmm. and your husband um, the tighter you are together on it, the stronger it's going to be knitted. And I think oh, yeah. when they sense those fractures, when they sense um, those different dynamics uh, that kind of are trying to erode the relationship, that's when they just kind of come in and try to go for the pounce. How do you, you oh, yeah. how do you and your husband keep it tight? And, I, and I'm glad you mentioned that because that was the advice that our pastors gave us too. Because as we were starting to have trouble with the children, um, you know, first we brought them, put them on the altar, and then <laughs> we, we weren't playing no games. And then, but then he, they both told us, you know, the tighter you are, the more united you guys are. You show them a united front; they're not going to be able to mess with you. Mm -hmm. They're not going to stop trying, mm -hmm. but they're not going to be able to mess with you. And so we had to look at each other and say, okay. What are we going to do? Mm -hmm. You know, how are we going to be united? Mm -hmm. And so we started to not let them play each other against us because mm -hmm. that would always happen. Mm -hmm. That's smarter. You know, I'm not going to allow that. You know, they say one thing. Well, hold on. I got dad on the phone. What'd you say? Mm -hmm. Oh, ne never mind. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> you know, or, or hold on. Let me, let me have that call your mom and see if that's okay. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, that's okay. Never mind. You know, mm -hmm. it started to change it, but they would still, it would still test us. Mm -hmm. But we were more in tune with each other. It was kind of like, I'm not doing this without checking in with you, mm -hmm. and you're not doing that without checking with me. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they can't get through either one of us. Mm -hmm. They yeah. can't get through either one of us. You know, so it, there is no go to dad or go to mom. You know, yeah, it's, I'm gonna get the same thing either way. 
Yeah, I'm sorry. It, I, I didn't mean to overspeak you there. No, you're fine. It, may, it makes me think of something that I say often when mm -hmm. you talked about the shift that you made to make it tight for you guys mm -hmm. is you have to, in certain circumstances, especially this one, because you can anticipate very well where it's going to come from. Mm -hmm. In these situations, you got to be prepared with a response and not a mm -hmm. reaction. Mm -hmm. Because if you react... It's always, listen to me, always going to go sideways. Oh, yes. Oh, and yes. so if you have a prepared response, whether it's, I'm going to get your dad on the phone. Mm -hmm. I'm going to call and confirm what you're saying with X person. I'm mm -hmm. going, you know, if you prepare yourself, then you're not as taken off guard when something crazy is said because right. our initial reaction is be like oh no you're talking crazy now you know and but we... i've had those moments <laughs> i have had the you ain't gonna talk to me like that moments and i have i've had those where i mean we're human we're all in flesh you know at some point we can only take so much mm -hmm. and i have just completely gone off i'm like mm -hmm. i i can't i can't you know and i've had to bring myself back down mm -hmm. this is not who you are this is not how you act <laughs> but it will get to you. I'm not telling you that it won't. Um, it will get to you. It will get to you. But you have to, you have to pray. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to pray. It is not possible. And I say, and I and I say that because that is our faith. And if whatever faith you have, mm -hmm. take some faith. Mm -hmm. I'm not telling you what you know what you believe is wrong, but in our faith, we pray. Mm -hmm. And you have to pray. Mm -hmm. And so there have been some situations where, you know, I have just, I, it just brought me down, you know? Mm -hmm. And then there was other situations where I have been able to take the high road. Mm -hmm. And so I'm thankful for that. Um, but it does take time to work on those things and to practice those things. Mm -hmm. As those situations come up, practicing those responses that you've prepared mm -hmm. so that you don't snap. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't get under your skin. Mm -hmm. And like you said, just take it as a response and keep yourself detached from the actual situation mm -hmm. because people will say things that will prick you mm -hmm. and get you to your point where it's like, enough is enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna let you know who I am mm -hmm. <laughs> real quick. Mm -hmm. So definitely, definitely um, take your practice, but also pair it with prayer because mm -hmm. they, they go together. And you're going to need both of them. That's good. That's mm -hmm. good, Ebony. Really, really good. So at some point, you were moved to establish the blended love as a resources for blended families. Mm -hmm. What kind of ignited that purpose? I think you talked a little bit about you were looking for things and couldn't find mm -hmm. it. And in what ways did you identify that you could be impactful and serve? So the first um, event that we did with them blended love was a blended family conference and we thought that well we envisioned um people being able to connect mm -hmm. with different blended families in an open setting mm -hmm. we had a therapist that worked with not only the adults but the children mm -hmm. we had different group group activities that brought out um, so we had a children's activity, we had an adult activity, and then we actually separated the men from the women because men have different issues in blended families than women. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, we had a really great panel discussion so that people could ask all their questions, um, you know, and kind of get those things out that they've been wanting to with a group of experts um, in blended families. Mm -hmm. And so from there, we had, like I said, we had different plans, but COVID kind of hit. And from there, it was our intent to create more open discussions, more open events um, to allow families to come together to meet and to get those resources all in one place. Mm -hmm. But you know, not everything that happens is bad because of, because of COVID, now we can offer those resources not only in person, but online. Mm -hmm. So, and our website, um, we're constructing that so that people can get those resources online. So that people can ask those questions on our blog. People can have those things no matter where they are with their blended family. They can download a you know a session or they can tap into one of our um, specialists. And so it it taught us to look at things a little bit differently and not just focus on our area, but now we can focus on as many blended families as we can touch. Yeah. So I think that has truly been the blessing out of everything. Um, 
I know that the main resources that we wanted to set up, like I said, was just that counseling aspect, um, addressing the issues within the children, and then the co-parenting. Those are the really things that we really saw um, could make a big difference. Mm -hmm. Not everybody knows how to Mm co-parent. Nobody teaches you that. I was taught, I was raised in a two-parent household. My parents have been married for almost 50 years. Mm -hmm. That's, That's all I know. That's all I know. So you're telling me I'm supposed to go from that to knowing how to deal with my husband and my child's father, I have no knowledge in that. Mm-hmm. That's not what I've seen. So you have to prepare somebody with that, you know. Those are really key areas. And you know, as you were talking, I'm sitting here pondering that if if the statistics are true and 50% mm-hmm. of marriages end in divorce, I don't understand why there aren't more resources because clearly, clearly relationships are being formed (laughs) from people Mm -hmm. who come from a relationship that has ended. And so Mm -hmm. I think where you guys have nestled in to serve is such a great need and the numbers definitely support the necessity because, you know, so many families are uniting this way. Mm -hmm. So many structures are being bonded through blended family structures, whether, you Mm -hmm. know, it's the extension of family taking in children or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's very admirable what you guys are putting together. And it sounds like your events are inclusive of the family, not just the parents. It's inclusive of the children coming in and being served as well. Yes. Mm-hmm. Awesome. 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 So I, I know that this isn't the only lane where you have interests. You're probably just as busy as me when it comes <laughs> to having a lot going on. Uh, tell me a little bit about some of the other businesses that you support as well locally there in Milwaukee. So we, um, my husband and I are also, um, we own Wits and Wonder Productions. That is our event design and event production company. I'm the designer. My husband is more uh, sales and marketing. That's his area. He loves that. Wow. We're a full service event production company. So that what that means is you see an event that you want and you say, I want to put something, a unique touch on this. And we're the ones that you would call. Okay. And we would help you do that. We make a lot of our items custom like our centerpieces um you know backdrops anything you can think of it's always unique to our specific client that's um very great to hear how you guys are enterprising together hopefully you are figuring out ways to layer in the children and allow them to be a part of that Um, yeah they work with us they we're, we're training them to work with us they they actually they love the blended families like they're like we you know they're a part of it. We, we talk with them. We ask them, you know, what do you guys think about this? Or do you want a hand in this? Or how should we do this activity? They are a part of it um, all the way to the T. So we do it together as a family. Mm-hmm. Awesome. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Ebony, for sharing your story and being so transparent. Um, I always like to close out each of my episodes by asking three distinct questions. I call them the LLH questions. (laughs) And so it's all about just tapping into your wisdom, the wisdom of your experiences. So what would you tell your younger self about life if you could? That it gets better, that it it not gets better, but it begins in your thirties. When you finally realize what it is, when you have got yourself together, you know, that's when you really start to experience life. So, and I think so many people have taught these younger people, you know, not to want to get old, honey, get old, (laughs) get old, get old, be 30, 40, 50, 60. That's where it's at. Mm -hmm. Not, I don't want to go back to my twenties. I I do not. I don't, some people want to, not me. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. All right. The second question is this. What would you tell your younger self about love if you could? To wait. Mm -hmm. To wait. Mm -hmm. Not to go for your first one or your second one, but to wait and just um, focus more. Love yourself first Mm -hmm. before you can really say, I love somebody else. Mm -hmm. Know who you are and what it is that you want to do with yourself. Mm-hmm. what is your own purpose before you can attach yourself to the purpose of someone else? Cause that's really what it is. When you love somebody, I'm going to help you reach your goals. Mm-hmm. We're going to work together. 
well, what is that? You know, Mm -hmm. a lot of them. And I think sometimes that's why a lot of couples aren't successful is because one, you know, they get together, then one person kind of goes off. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, you know, I I really kind of figured out what I want to do or who I am. But that now that doesn't match who you're with. Really good stuff. And then finally, what would you tell yourself about happiness, your younger self about happiness, if you could? That happiness does not lie in what you have or what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Happiness is within yourself. That's beautiful, Ebony. I have one last thing that I want to Mm -hmm. say to you before we close out. I want to first thank you for, again, being so open and transparent with your experiences. And I will make sure that people know how to connect with you um, in our show notes and uh, they can reach out and take advantage, especially of some of the virtual things you have going on now and anything locally. And then finally, success looks so good on you. (laughs) Thank you. All right. Well, that's it, beautiful. Thank you for tuning in. Don't ever forget that you truly deserve life, love, and all the happiness your heart can hold. Be relentless in building a life you love without apology. I'm Denise Taylor, and you can always find me in our free Facebook community. Life, love, in the pursuit of happiness, easy to find. Now, if you want more information about my success superpowers, as I'm sure you do, download my free success superpowers ebook at denisetaylor.live forward slash podcast. And one last thing, always embrace your power and go.